Today we're going to be completing labs 7, 8, and 9. And that means we'll be covering keeping score with lab 7, adding text and sound with lab 8, and finally adding a title screen with lab 9, and then you're finished. Okay. Your quizzes are due on Wednesday, and your assignment 1 is due on Friday. So what we do is we open up ping.mfa. And we're in project one. So obviously we're gonna double click game, we're gonna game frame. And we're all ready to resume. If you're not maximized here, click that little maximize button. So I'm going to insert my uh, timer. I'm going to go insert, new object. I'm going to go over here to games. I click score. I click OK. And I'm going to put a score right here. I do the same thing to put a score on the other side. I go insert, new object, games, score, go OK. And I put one on this side. So now obviously I have to rename my object. So I just click my object here so I can tell them apart. You know what I mean? I'm going to right click this one. I click rename. And I call this player one score. Click OK. Do the same thing over here. Second one, right click. Go click uh, rename. Call it player two score. Click OK. So unless I tell this game otherwise, it's going to think that both of these scores are for player one. So I got to set this to player two. So I click this here. I click settings, and I click this player one and change it to player two. That's all there is to that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font, or I'm going to change the look of um, my score. And I click my score 1 here, and I'm going to make sure that my settings box is checked, and I'm going to change my type. Uh, it says numbers, I'm going to click and choose text. Next I'm going to check my text box up here, text box. I just click where it says REL. So my font dialog box here, I'm going to check what particular style I want. I just come on down and find something that I think will look good. Broadway looks fine. I'm going to go OK. So I might want to choose my size here, make it a little bigger so it shows up pretty well. So I'm going to click on 60. You don't want it too big, uh, but you want it big enough that you can see it, but not in the way. So now what I gotta do is click the red, green, blue box here and choose a color that will stand out. Kind of a, I think a, a mellow yellow will look good there. So I'm going to do the same thing with the player two op with the second score option. I click it, I make sure that my settings button is pressed. I change this from numbers to text. I click my text option up here. I want to change my font from Arial. We chose on this one. I forget what we chose. Broadway. I clicked OK and I changed it to 16. I made it bigger. So then all I had to do was I had to change the color. So I clicked red, green, blue. And I chose a, a yellow. So now we have both of these selected. So now I'm going to have it keep score. And the way I do this is I click the View menu, go down and click Event Editor. Okay, in the ball leaves the play area in the right row, right here. In the Player 1 column, you can see that's the one that has the joystick with the 1 by it. I right click the box, 
then I click score, then I click add to score. And now what I, how much do I add to the score? One. I click OK. So now then, when does player two get a score? When the ball leaves the play area on the left. So all I do is I right click here, I go score, add to score, and then what? One. It just adds one to the score every time that ball, the other player misses the ball and it goes off the uh, boundaries to the right. So you see, if it leaves the player in the right, player one gets a score. If it leaves it on the left, player two gets a score. So now, of course, what we've got to do is we've got to test what we just did. You can press F8 or go run application. So we're going to make sure that every time the ball goes out of bounds, it gives somebody a score, the right person a score. And that should be, yep, he got the score. The other person got the score. All right, now it just keeps on giving the score as soon as um, it goes off the other player's side. So that's what should happen. But the one thing we need to do here before we move on is we need to set a boundary in the score. Our just scores just increase forever. Someone's going to win. So we got to figure out what the win point is. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the player score to be 13 to win. So I click New Condition. And then I'm going to right click Player 1. Then I'm, going to click, then I'm going to click Compare to Player Score. Now, um, when the player score equals 13, he's going to win. So I'm going to set the condition to 13 and click OK. So now I'm going to also do the one for player two. So let's click new condition. I click on it, right click on player two. I can click compare to player score. And now if it equals 13, he's going to win. So I can click OK. So now we got to think what happens to the ball when the player hits 13. It goes away, right? So we click, we're going to click here and we're going to click destroy the ball. Same thing with this one. If this player wins, the first thing that happens is that ball goes away. We're going to destroy the ball. So now let's make sure you're on track here to end up Lab 7. Run, rather, application or F8, and then just let it go. Does it end when it hits 13? Just check it out. The ball should disappear when it hits 13 now. Now the first thing I do is I click on the insert menu. I'm going to be adding uh, text. So click new object and the create new object dialog box here. I'm going to look for a string. Now a string is just uh, a bunch of letters. It's um, any kind of non-defined um, text that shows up on a screen here. I click OK. And once again, you had to scroll down to see your ABC. Just click OK. Now click anywhere on the play area to add our string object. It doesn't matter where you put it because you're going to move it later anyway. Click ABC. Click OK. Just click somewhere to put it. It doesn't matter where you put it because you're going to move it later anyway. First thing I do is I'm going to select my text string. Now in the properties toolbar, I'm going to select the settings icon that's already selected. And then I'm going to delete the text and I'm going to type here, um, player one wins. Then I'm going to press enter. In the properties toolbar, I'm going to click, click new. Now in the blank field, I'm going to type player two wins, and then I'm going to press enter.
Now I'm going to uh, make that appear later when uh, player two wins the game. I don't set it to appear right now yet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to format this text so you can read it. You need to make sure that your string object is selected. It's highlighted like this is. So you go in the properties toolbar and you click the text options icon. It looks like this. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to click the color for our text. So I'm going to click the red, green, blue box right here. Then click a color for my text. I want it to show up. Do something kind of a light greenish thing here. And next to where it says Arial here for font, I'm going to change that to um, a type of font that I'm going to use. So I'm going to be consistent here. So I wanted to choose a so uh, font, so I chose Broadway, and I can increase the uh, size here. Click OK. If that isn't, uh, if you can't see that well enough, just bold it. So this changed both the paragraphs and the string object, even though you can't see them both right now. So in the frame editor, I'm going to click and drag the text to a gray area outside the play area. And it's okay that you can't see the text very well, or if it gets cut off, it's going to still show up in the game later. Now what's going to happen is player one wins and we're going to give him a little message show up. I'm going to click the, event, the view menu and then click event editor. In the score of player one equals 13 row, in the string column, I'm going to right click the box and then I'm going to click um, display text. In the score of player one equals 13 row in the string column, I gotta find the string column. I'm gonna here it is, right here with the A B C under it. I'm gonna right click the box and I'm gonna click display text. So uh, the, the string icon has the letters A B C in it. The display text dialog box right here opens up in the frame editor. In the frame editor, click and drag the flashing X to where you want the player wins text to be. Put it right there, how about? Um, in the display text box, I'm just going to click OK. So we chose player one wins and we closed it out. So now we're going to set the player's two winning text. So where it says score equals 13 for player two here. Uh, what you do is you come over here, uh, right click the box and click display text. In the display text dialog box, so you're going to click and drag the flashing X to where you want the um, player 2 wins text to be. I think I'll, we'll have it over here. If the, uh, if the display text is in your bot way, just, just drag it out of your way there. So all you have to do is click OK. Then what you do is in the display text, you, you display player 2 wins. And then just click OK. Now let's test out what we've done, what we've done so far. Let's click Run. Then we're going to click Application. Or you can just press F8 if you'd rather. And what we're going to do is we're going to see, wait till somebody makes 13 and see if our winning box comes up. So we hit 13 and the player 2 wins. So now I'll try it again and try and see if I can't get player 1 to win. So I'm going to go File, New. Go. Now we've made cut player one to win. 